With Naxport, collecting data for analysis is known as registering. You might also have heard the terms coding, tagging or observation. All of these are interchangeable and basically describe the same process. There are three different types of registering. Real-time register is the capture of video and collection of data while the match is being played live. Register without video source, which is similar to real-time registration. An example of this might be watching a live broadcast while registering actions, and then synchronizing this to the game video after the fact. And lastly, in this video, we're going to concentrate on register from file, which is the collection of data from an existing video and is usually done post-match. Let's begin. From the main menu, select the option Register from File. Next, select the video you want to work with. The next step is to choose the button template you want to work with. Choose a pre-made one or create a new template. We are going to use one that has already been created. Three windows now appear. The button template, video player and a toolbar which can be used to control your data collection. Remember, these windows can be resized or positioned anywhere you want. There are a couple of template features we'd like to mention before we move on. You can change the template or edit the current one with the first two icons on the right of the toolbar. You can also adjust the buttons to fit the template, lock the template in place, show keyboard shortcuts, or display extra info. Right-clicking on any button in the template will reveal various editing options. The most important of these at this point is changing the Auto-Add Descriptor property for any of your descriptor buttons. Finally, based on the button template you have designed, you control the video player and click the relevant buttons when you see these actions. For category buttons, with a preset time, you click them once to register them. Category buttons in manual mode need to be clicked once to activate them, and then clicked a second time to deactivate them and complete the register. Manual buttons can also be linked, so that activating one deactivates another. Multiple manual buttons can be deactivated at the same time using the escape key. Descriptors are added to any manual category that is active, or the last press category. So remember to register actions by first clicking the category button and then the descriptor that you want to add. OK, let's turn our attention to the video player. In the upper left, you can choose from various predefined sizes. Clicking on the settings icon or right-clicking on the screen will open two menus with various options. These include adding more video angles, editing keyboard controls, drawing on video frames, displaying text on videos, and more. Let's focus on the control window the horizontal toolbar with different tools that allows you to control your data collection. There are four ways to review and control your data, and each one has a slightly different look and specific use. Play-by-play -play gives you a list of categories with relevant descriptors. The timeline displays them in chronological order. The dashboard provides graphs and charts, and the data matrix displays your data in a grid format. As you can have several windows open at the same time, you don't have to limit yourself to a single way of viewing data. Having said that, play-by-play -play and dynamic timeline cannot be opened at the same time. You must choose one or the other, whichever suits your needs best. All four data visualization tools are updated based on the clicks you make on your button template. Okay, let's continue with the control window. To the right of these four icons, you'll find the options for sending and receiving live data. Again, there's another video dedicated to this. Find it in the description. 
Under the Options heading, there are several tools for editing and customizing your data collection. And to the right, you can open the Context menu, which allows you to add information about the current analysis. Finally, on the right, you can see the current video time. And next to this, there's an icon for opening the timeline, which is the next phase in the analysis process. And that's it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And to keep up to date with all the latest Naxport news, why not subscribe to the channel? Thanks, and see you next time.